I always imagined myself as a butterfly, creative, beautiful, and carefree. Freedom. A seed had been planted, then my transformation began in a safe, protective, warm, and nurturing cocoon, the womb, before entering my world. We're all given special gifts in life. A voice is one of many. And this is the one I had the most difficult with. A voice is to express ourselves, to communicate, to laugh, to cry, and to love. And I was always told if you had a special gift to share, share it. It would be selfish of me not to share my story. My story would help one or many people. That is a special gift. My parents were my role models growing up, as your own would be. What child does not look up to their parents? Wouldn't that be right? Parents are supposed to have the ability and the intelligence to guide, to motivate, and inspire us as children. My parents inspired me from a young, early age. They always communicated with each other. You would hear them laugh and chat for hours at night. They always discussed everything together. They also showed us how to embrace love for each other, first as a couple, then also as parents. We get loads of hugs and kisses in our family. And I always told myself as a child, this is the kind of relationship I'm going to have when I grow up. I'm such a romantic. But that was not to be. So imagine as a 10-year-old girl, your voice was stolen. And when I mean stolen, I mean totally numbed. She could not speak freely and she could not express herself having suffered the trauma of sexual abuse by a neighbor, not once, but twice. She never went back. Not only did this man steal her voice, he also had taken away her whole identity as Trisha, me. That fun, loving, bubbly child became introvert, scared, quiet, shy, broken, and hidden. And as a troubled child, I had a worldview that was informed by trauma. I lived in fear of everyone and all the world around me. I got bullied by siblings and so-called friends from school about my body image, which led me to bulimia right up until my adult years. This was my first stage of self-sabotage. At the age of 15, and my first year of employment as a hairdresser, which I totally do to this day and I totally love, myself and an oligar were called to the office. We both looked at each other. What the hell? What did we do? Jackie was pulled for talking too much to the clients. And yes, you can guess, I was pulled for not speaking at all. No surprise there. I became the rebel of the household and I pressed that self-destruct button once again. I found alcohol to numb my pain and suffering. I put myself in toxic, emotional, painful situations that I did not want to come home. Then my parents realized there was issues. Both my parents never drank. At the age of 17, they decided to take me to see a counselor. And not to their surprise, I didn't speak. I wouldn't open up. I had no voice. I continued the cycle of self-destruct for at least another 40 years. Two domestic violent marriages, mental, physical, sexual, and financial abuse, which led on to alcohol-dependent relationships, then to total isolation. Alcohol got me through those dark, lonely nights. Alcohol became my best friend. Imagine a bottle becoming your friend. This little 10-year-old Trisha was drowning in pain and suffering in silence. Craving for alcohol on a daily basis became my reality, and inflicting pain and telling myself I deserved it. Now, what did I to live for? Children look up to their parents as role models, don't they? I was not much of a mother to my children. 
was I. That loving mother got lost along the way. Failure was the only way to my success, and my children always captured my heart. I wanted to live, I wanted freedom, and I wanted to become the best version of myself, first and foremost. And I wanted to become the mother my children needed and could look up to. Loving, caring, inspirational, trustworthy, integrity, and so much more. And for I to become that brilliant, amazing mother, I had to change. I craved for that love outside of myself, the love my father embraced with my mother, that I had always yearned for from that young age. Gabor Mate says, when a child is wounded, what assumption can they make about the world? It's a fearless, hostile place to be in. So people who are traumatized, that's how they grow up, that the world is a fearless, hostile, horrible place. My open wounds, feelings of rage, pain, and all the underlying traumas were never healed. They were suppressed deep down so much internally that I did not and I could not have a voice. Fast forward to the here and now. I became free of my old enslaving self. I now had the capacity within to turn my life around. I released all the intentions out there to the universe to set me free from this toxic, volatile, and same world that I was in. This dark cloud was hanging over me. I now crave for sobriety and to live the life that I've always dreamed of. I could not lose my children. I would not lose my children. I was driven and I had the desire and I put my toxic life into action. I joined AA and become a member of a fellowship. I was consistent at my meetings. I prayed and embraced for like-minded people to come into my life. I always knew that I was more than my addicted self. Deep down, I knew I had a gift. My confidence, self-worth, and self-belief were diminished. This soft voice whispered in my ear, change the old inner critic. I cannot change my past, but I embrace each day and be grateful when I look into the mirror and say to that little Tricia, as a 59-year-old woman today, you are beautiful, you are safe, you are totally worthy of love, and I love you. I never thought that that childhood trauma that little Tricia experienced from that young age ever had that major vast impact on her life until that day I started healing myself within. Tearing off the band-aids and allowing the open wounds to heal in a safe environment. That's the beauty of the healing. Now, ask the source, what changes do you need to make to move forward? What is really holding you back from the dream and the life that you deserve. We all deserve the best in life. I am truth of that today. I am over three years sober, and I did not lose my wonderful six children. There's still a lot of healing along the way as a family. I'm back to school, so to speak. Studying, guess what? Addictions, traumas, Depression, anxiety, and all else that comes with it. A new found freedom. A quote by Edward Everett Hale. I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And I will not allow what I cannot do interfere with what I can do. Little Tricia is here with me as a 59-year-old woman standing on this platform today. I am only one, but I am one, and I have a voice.